Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those present here at church and also those attending Mass via live stream at home. My name is Barbara Jean Rowell, Diane Driscoll, and I will be your electors today. We gather today as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's Word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday, Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father John. Our Mass intention is for my mother, Barbara Ann Rowell. Our second collection today is for the clergy, health, and retirement. <clears throat> Today's parable of the unforgiving servant should stand in our minds as direction for when we are having trouble forgiving someone. The immense forgiveness that you and I have received from God is vast. God overlooks every sin you and ever have and ever will commit. When you and I for withhold forgiveness from others, it fails to appreciate the gift God has given us. Will our hearts be moved to forgive something today as we hear today's parable? In a spirit of hospitality, I invite you now to stand and greet those around you. <clears throat> Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Please join in singing number 468, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, number 468. Thank you. Let's pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We gather here this day to praise God as a parish family and friends, to thank God for all the gifts of life, the blessing of faith. We also acknowledge each week our faults and our failings of life. Let's now pause briefly, call to mind our sins, and welcome God's mercy and God's peace this hour. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another? and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon from his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherish wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, and remember the most high's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Does he deal with us? 
nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward all those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for us for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I give unto you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I'll pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of the fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. 
his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Forgiveness. It's something I think all of us struggle with at various times in our life. When someone hurts us by gossip, by failing to do something for us, forgetting something uh, kind deed in our life, a birthday, an anniversary date, a uh, home life activity, and that person really you know, hurts us to the core, how do we respond? I know some respond by the silent treatment, right? That works often for people, where for that rest of the night or for the weekend, you may just sort of be quiet in the home, and that sends a big message of how you're hurt. Or you may really lash out, you know, why'd you say that? Why didn't you do that? Or we must forget about it and just let it go. But the hurt is always there. I think all of us would agree that we have to, in due time, to communicate and share our thoughts and our feelings, our hurt, our pain, our anger, and to have that reconciliation. It takes a forgiving heart to do that. But our world today really conditions us to have that attitude of payback. That person hurt me, I'm going to get back. They said the silent treatment, unkind words, unkind deeds, and we really have that ongoing you know, tiff with someone because of that hurt, that pain, that difficulty. But we as Christians, as Catholics, know so well the value and importance of forgiveness. First and foremost, it's difficult, don't get me wrong, to forgive someone who hurts us and who really goes to the core of our being. But today's gospel, the theme is forgiveness. Here's a story, the parable of the king goes to a person, says, you owe me some money, I, don't, I can't pay back. I forgive you totally. And that person who's forgiven goes out there and sees somebody else, you owe me something. And then he will not offer that forgiveness. And so that is really the, the disconnect in our life. Because the parable in the gospel is how God treats us. No one here is perfect. We all have our faults and our failings. We, we strive to be perfect and holy, but we're always not there just yet. We're called to keep on that pathway, that road to holiness in our life. And that's the challenge all of us face each and every day. But we must first and foremost believe that God is a merciful, forgiving God. And as you and I receive God's forgiveness, God's love, God's mercy, it really opens us to that ability to forgive others, a loved one, spouse, friend, forgive a stranger, a colleague at work, a, a neighbor down the street, whatever the issue may be. And we must do our best as we receive God's forgiving spirit to share that with others. This past week, preparing for the homily this week, and I read many stories of forgiveness. If you go on the internet, you put forgiveness and Christian life, you'll get loads of beautiful stories of how forgiveness has been shown to others. And one story I want to share with you tonight 
and it goes back many years, uh, post World War II. There's a woman named Rose Marie Grattan, and she was a famous pianist in France. And she got involved in the French resistance at that time, where uh, there would be that group to be aware of the Nazi uh, exploits and maneuverings in France. And she even you know, helped many Jewish individuals to be safe and to find their way away from harm. And sadly, she and her sister were found and were imprisoned at one of the concentration camps. And due to her um, uh, incarceration, uh, her health suffered. And upon release, she survived that terrible uh, experience. She was never able to perform again as a concert pianist. Her whole future was changed. Her sister died in the camps. And she survived and she lived with loved ones afterwards. But her, the whole trajectory of her life changed because of her treatment in the camps. And I think 30 or 40 years after that, in the 80s, she had this experience of talking about her life and the value of where she sees herself now. And as she was expressing herself, what camp she was in, in the, during that World War II experience, afterwards, a man approached her and says, I was one of the physicians there during that time. And he chatted a bit, and he said, I am so sorry how you were treated. Will you forgive me? And so where this was a very ethereal kind of forgiveness in her life, okay, I'm finding peace to move on in my life. Here she was face to face with someone who hurt her in the camp who now asked for forgiveness. And so, wow, how would she respond? Could she really have that in the moment awareness and the value all she spoke about and thought about years past was all talk. But somehow she had the, the real depth of forgiveness and love. And she said in a beautiful way, she extended her hand. He also extended his hand. And as she says in a beautiful words, somehow the energy of that moment seeped from the hands to my head to my heart. And I found peace as I truly had this forgiving spirit in the moment. And wow. And I'm sure there are many other experiences through that time period where people had to reorder their life to find forgiveness of that people who may have hurt them at that point. And she said the following, I embraced him to drop him into the heart of God. I found that statement very uplifting. I forgave him so to drop him into the heart of God's love. And I once thought about how we forgive people. And I think a way to do that is to bring that person to God for healing for new life, for peace. Part of life, we don't forget those incidents. We have been hurt through gossip, through painful experiences, a myriad of, act, of actions. But somehow we can find that peace by presenting that person to God in love and care and goodness. And somehow we have that resolve to move on. So. Pete, forgiveness is that great liberator. I'm sure all of us have experienced when you've been hurt, you hold on to that. It does more damage to your soul and your heart and your spirit than the actual action. It's so difficult to hold on to anger, to have that sense of inner bitterness, the inner strife. But after time and working through that possible communication, What's your outcome? Peace and wholeness and tranquility of heart. 
yeah, I've been hurt, that person hurt me in words or action, but I, I want to be more, I want to feel more love and goodness in the world and let go of that. And sometimes you cannot have that face-to-face -face encounter with that person or whatever that may be, the issue, but you can have that really inner peaceful moment of saying, okay, this is what happened, this is how it is, but now I want to walk forward in life as a new person. I forgive, I care, I move forward. And so this gospel story reminds us of God's forgiving, merciful attitude toward us. And once we experience that ourselves, that mercy and that, that love and forgiveness, then we are prompted to do our best to shine forth that back into the world. Because we, we have to see the connection there between God's mercy to us, sinner, and our mercy toward others who also hurt us in various ways. And here in the Lord's time, when the disciples asked, how many times do I uh, forgive someone? In that Jewish uh, theology, three times was the answer often given. That's why we hear said in the gospel, seven times enough? And then Jesus always ups the ante. No, 70 times seven, that means keep going. Don't give up. Keep trying. Never give up on someone. Always be there to help and to really foster that forgiveness spirit. So my friends today, a tough gospel for us to listen to, but it's part of Matthew's chapter of what it means to be a Christian person in the world. As this early century, they were defining the Christian life, the values to live by, caring for your neighbor, being patient, valuing life, staying close to God in prayer. And here was the issue of forgiveness. So each one of us is unique. Each one of us has our own unique story to tell, our history right now, where we are in the future. And I'm sure we can say, yeah, I want to go forth and be healed, new life, a spirit of peace. And hopefully each one of us can pray about this forgiving attitude, share it and live it, and encourage us, encourage it in all our relationships as we go forth in joy in God's kingdom. So may God bless my friends today. May we truly have that image of forgiveness in our spirit. And as this person, the story that I told, that can be a wonderful image too. I embrace that person and drop that person into the loving heart of God. And that loving heart of God, to use the imagery, is forever, is beautiful, is healing. And as we work with God for that healing, forgiving spirit, wow, great things can happen. So never neglect or negate the possibility when God gets involved in something in a good motivation spirit, what can happen? And forgiveness is that wonderful gift we can offer to others, more so heal our hearts, bring us strength and peace always to embrace the beauty of God's love and God's goodness to us all. Let us now stand as you and I profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made consubstantial with the Father, whom all things are made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified in a Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in the He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. The dead, the life, the world to come. My friends, let's now bring our prayers before our Lord, who is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. That the Holy Spirit may continue to lead the church in the way of God's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may be united by Jesus, the one bread come down from heaven to save us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are hungry may receive their fill through the outpouring of the overabundant love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children waiting to be born and the mothers who carry them, and children waiting to be adopted, and the families who will receive them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in the company of the Lord, especially Jeannie Scollins, Margaret Sullivan, James Kershaw, Albert Cornu, and Carolyn Menation, may soon find eternal rest in his heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Barbara Ann Rowell, we pray for this Mass today. May she receive eternal no. peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and sirs we call to mind this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, listen to our prayers this day. Deepen our faith and our trust in your goodness. Help us always to embrace a forgiving spirit in our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 406, Open My Eyes, number 406. Places 
we've never known. Open my eyes, Lord. Help Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in your noble God, the Almighty Father. In the Lord's Lord, with, supp- with favor on our supplications, O Lord, in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. If you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons, you formed us in your own image, set us over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we pray together. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, in and in his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended to the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. To your Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. We pray this day for Barbara Ann Rowell and Jeannie Scollins. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, to Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now gather our prayers together and pray in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. Lift the Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we are always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's now turn to our friends and offer the sign of peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During communion, please join in singing number 664, Loving and Forgiving, number 664. Please join in singing 
At number 627. We're going to step back 50 years, I think, and sing Whatsoever You Do, an old song that we probably haven't sung in a while. Number 627. of announcements this afternoon. The first being, please join us this weekend for our parish and school picnic immediately following the 1130 Mass. We will enjoy food, games, and fun for the whole family. Corey weekend will take place on September 23rd, 24th. All parish volunteers are required to submit this annual background check. And this year only, they are also required to submit the Archdiocese's new volunteer application form. For your convenience, tables will be stationed outside each Mass for you to do your quarry and application on the way out of Mass the weekend of September 23rd and 24th. Please be sure to bring your license. Thank you, and have a blessed and wonderful weekend. Thank you, Diane, for those parish updates. Again, tomorrow is our annual parish school picnic. Please come back. Uh, it'll be a beautiful weather day. We'll be out in the back here. A lot of games for the kids. I think we have a bouncy house, whatever that is, coming, a bouncy house, and a games for the kids, hot dogs, hamburgers, you name it. And I talked to the Patriots last spring, and the game is at 8.30 tomorrow night. <laughs> There's no excuses for football fans, okay? So please come, it's always a wonderful time. And uh, on behalf of my brother priests who are sick, infirmed, and retired, thank you very much for today's contribution, second collection, that goes into the fund for all the health care, the retirement needs. So we appreciate your support. I have a few more years to go but I'll be there shortly. But thank you for caring for our brother priests who are now retired, who served the church so well through their priesthood. In the bullet, in the pilot today, there's names of guys who are retiring this year after 50, 60 years of service in parish life. And your generosity and kindness support them in the retirement years, their health care and all their needs. So thank you very much for your support. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy God's blessings. And we're very fortunate to have that hurricane go off coast, wasn't we? So we're very lucky there. So God bless. Let's now stand for our final prayers. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and hearts 
so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, but see you tomorrow. Okay? Please join in singing number 392, which is the Celtic Alleluia sending forth. Joy, oh.